and welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. I'm your host Brittany. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to crochet a teddy bear and we're going to use three videos to cover the entire project. To complete your teddy bear, you're going to need several supplies. You'll need one skein of Lion Brand Heartland yarn or approximately 165 yards of another worsted weight yarn, three yards of worsted weight black yarn, one sheet of white felt, an optional sheet of a colored felt, any color that you choose, two buttons that are approximately a half inch to three quarter inch in size, polyfill stuffing, shank back eyes, blush, which is optional, four millimeter crochet hook, a large and small darning needle, scissors, and a hot glue gun. You can find all the information that you need for this pattern, the written instructions, the supplies list, and a detail coverage of the different parts of each video at BeHookedCrochet.com and you can find the link below this video in the description. This first video, video number one, we're going to learn how to crochet the head, the snout, and the ears. We're going to start off this pattern by crocheting the head. And now almost every single piece of the teddy bear that we're going to be crocheting is going to start off with a magic ring with six single crochet. And before you go running for the hills, I'm going to break down the magic ring just in case you're unfamiliar with it or if you have a little bit of trouble. And just know that there is an alternate magic ring method and you can find a video for that on my YouTube channel. To begin the magic ring, we just want to take the tail of our yarn and we need to wrap that around our first two fingers of our non-dominant hand two times coming towards you. And you'll want to secure this tail with your thumb here. And now in the background I've got the working yarn and I'm holding on to that with my other two fingers and I'm kind of pulling snug on that because we're going to be working with these two loops so we need to have a little bit of tension on them. I will just pick up our hook and we're just going to grab that that back strand. So we've got the hook underneath both. Grab the back strand and just pull it directly underneath that first strand. Now we need to grab some of our working yarn. So I just lift those back two fingers up and yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. That's going to lock the magic ring in place. And since we're working in single crochets, we need to chain one. So we'll grab that working yarn again and pull through the loop on our hook. Now I like to get this in a different position, so I'm just going to steady this with my thumb and take out my fingers and just gather up my yarn like I normally do. Now one thing that's very important is this the tail we need to make sure that that is always laying down in this forward position and that we're working over top of it when we make our single crochets because that is the strand that makes our magic ring work. So we have to make sure we're working over those. Now we just want to create our first single crochet into the magic ring. So you just insert your hook into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. So this chaining of one for this pattern we're not counting as a single crochet. So that was the first of six. We need to make five more into this ring. And once you have six single crochet, we can go ahead and drop our working yarn. We're not going to need that for a minute. And pick up that tail. And you just want to secure the ring where the hook is with your other hand. And just pull on that tail. Now you want to pull a little bit tight to make sure you get it closed up. And now you should have a little piece that looks something like this. 
Round two begins by making a single crochet into this first stitch here. Now for all of the different pieces of this pattern, we're going to be crocheting in a spiral fashion, so we're never going to join with a slip stitch. We just want to start off by inserting our hook into that very first single crochet, and you're going to single crochet. Now you're going to want to have a stitch marker handy because when you're working in a spiral we have to keep track of the first stitch so that we can increase and decrease properly. So once you've made that first single crochet, just use your stitch marker to mark that stitch. And we're going to put one more single crochet into that same stitch. Now for the remainder of round two, we're going to put two single crochets into every stitch all the way around for a total of 12 stitches. Now once you've made it to the stitch with the stitch marker, we've completed round two and we're just going to go ahead and jump right into round three. So you just want to remove your stitch marker, place one single crochet into that stitch. This is going to be the first stitch for this round. And make sure you place your stitch marker in that stitch you just made. And in the next stitch we're going to make two single crochets. So we're following the rules of crocheting in the round. We're just doing a regular increase. So we've made one single crochet, two. Now in the next one we're going to do one. And then in the next stitch, two single crochets. And then one. and two, and we're just going to repeat that sequence around. At the end of this round you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. Now if you have been making your stitches in the proper order, you should end up with the last stitch here needing two single crochets. For round four, we're going to start off by placing one single crochet into the first stitch. and one into the next stitch and then two single crochets into the next. And that's our repeat. We'll do one and one and two. one, one, and two. So just repeat that sequence until you've reached the stitch marker.
And again, if you've been counting correctly and making your stitches properly, you should end up with the last stitch needing two single crochets. And also at the end of this round you should have a total of 24 stitches. Now we'll move right along to round 5. We're going to remove that stitch marker, place one single crochet into that stitch. That's our first. And we're going to be increasing again this round. So we've got our first single crochet. We'll make one into each of the next two. So we've got a total of three single crochets by themselves. And then we're going to make two single crochets into the next. So that's our repeat for this round. We'll do one, 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 and two. And we make two single crochets into that last stitch to finish off round five. Round six is going to be our last increasing round. And we're going to start off by making one single crochet into that first stitch, the one with the stitch marker. And then we'll make one single crochet into each of the next three. So this time around we have four single crochets by themselves. And we'll put two single crochets into the next. So make one single crochet into each of the next four. and two into the next. And that's our pattern repeat for this round. Go ahead and finish up round six and we'll meet back up at the end. And that finishes up round six. Round seven through ten are going to be exactly the same. We're not going to increase for these rounds. We're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch. And again, you should have a total of 36 stitches for each of these rounds.
At this point, you can go ahead and pause your video. I'm going to finish crocheting round seven through 10, and I will meet back up when I've completed those rounds. Okay, when you finished crocheting up to round 10, you should have something that looks like this. And round 11 and round 12, we're actually gonna increase again to allow for the shaping of the head. So we're gonna go ahead and take out the stitch marker and single crochet once into that first stitch. And then we're going to single crochet once into the next four stitches. So we should have a total of five single crochet. And then now in the next stitch, we're going to crochet two times. And then one single crochet into the next five stitches. and then two into the next. And that's our repeat for this round. When you finished round 11, you will have a total of 42 stitches. And now moving on to round 12, we're just going to remove our stitch marker. And this is going to be another round where we increase. So place a single crochet into that first stitch there. And then we're also going to single crochet once into the next five stitches. Then we're going to make two single crochets into the next stitch. Now make one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. and two single crochets into the next. And that's our repeat for this round. You'll just wanna continue that until we've reached the stitch marker. When you have completed round 12, you'll have a total of 48 stitches. Rows 13 through 19 are all going to be the same. We're going to make one single crochet into every stitch, and that's all there is to it. We want to make sure that we move the stitch marker every single round that we go because we're going to be decreasing at the end of round 19. So just go ahead and make one single crochet into every stitch for rows 13 through 19 and we'll meet back up at the end of round 19.
When you've completed round 19, you should have a total of 48 stitches, and your work should look something like this. Now moving on to rounds 20 through 24, we're going to start decreasing to finish off our head. And we're going to start off with round 20. We're going to make one single crochet into the first six stitches. And then we need to make a single crochet decrease over the next two. So you can see those next two stitches here. To make the single crochet decrease, you just want to insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then leave that loop on your hook, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up another loop, and when you have three loops on your hook, you'll yarn over and pull through all three. Then we're going to continue by single crocheting once into the next six stitches. And the very first single crochet that you make after this decrease, you want to make sure that you're making that stitch somewhat tight because as you can see it's kind of inevitable there's going to be a small little gap in between these two stitches and since we're going to be stuffing this we want to minimize the holes as much as possible. Now once you've made another six single crochet, we'll just go ahead and do another single crochet decrease. And continue along by crocheting once into the next six stitches. And that's our repeat for this round. At the end of round 20, you will now have a total of 42 stitches, and the last two stitches that you created should be a single crochet decrease. Now we're going to move on to round 21, and we're going to single crochet once into the first five stitches. and then we'll make a single crochet decrease over the next two. Single crochet into the next five stitches. And single crochet decrease. And that is our repeat for this round. Go ahead and finish up round 21. At the end of round 21 you'll have a total of 36 stitches and again the last stitch should be a single crochet decrease. And Now we'll move on to round 22 by making one single crochet into the first four stitches. And 
and then we'll do a single crochet decrease over the next two. Then single crochet into the next four. And a single crochet decrease. And so that's our pattern repeat for this round. And go ahead and finish up this round and we'll meet back up at the end. Now at the end of round 22 you should have a total of 30 stitches, last stitch being a single crochet decrease. And we'll move on to round 23. And in this round we're going to single crochet into the first three stitches. And then we will do a single crochet decrease, single crochet into the next three, and single crochet decrease. And that's our repeat for this round. After we've completed round 23, we will have a total of 24 stitches. And moving on to the last round, 24, we're going to make one single crochet into the first two stitches. And then a single crochet decrease over the next two. Now single crochet once into the next two. And a single crochet decrease over the next two stitches. And we're just going to repeat that for this round. At the end of round 24, we will have a total of 18 stitches, and at this point our head is finished and we can go ahead and bind off. So we want to leave ourselves about a foot or so of a tail, that way we can use that to sew our head to our body. And then we just are going to bind off, and at this point it's safe to remove your stitch marker. Now we'll go ahead and talk about adding the eyes. Now that we've finished crocheting our teddy bear's head, now we can go ahead and add on the eyes. And we want to do this before we stuff it because we won't be able to have access to them after we stuff it and of course after we sew them on unless you're using one of the craft eyes where you can glue it into place. I like to use these shank back animal eyes and I picked these up at Joann's. I feel like they have a little bit more of a natural look. And something else that I do that's optional is I take a piece of white felt and I've just cut this into an oval shape and I cut a slit in the middle so that the eye can fit, the shank can fit right into that notch. And when you do this, this is going to give your bear a little bit more of an alive appearance. And I like to cut it in an oval because I kind of pull the eye towards the center and allow for the other portion of the oval to come out the other side. So what I've done off camera is just cut those and I've got them ready. So I'm just going to place my eyes on my little felt pieces. Okay, and once you have that ready, 
you just want to pick this spot on the head that you like the most. So you want to pick, you know, the prettiest portion because this is going to be in the front. And once you've picked the side that you want to be the, the front, then if you turn your head up to the other, to the very top side, you're going to count down 10 rounds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And we're going to place the eyes in between this 10th and 11th round. So you'll probably need to put your fingers through the inside and then just take your eye and put it in between two of those stitches. And again, like I said, I like the, the larger portion of the oval to come down through the side. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then these shank back eyes come with these little backs, kind of work like earrings. So once I have it in place, I'm just going to place the back on and make sure you have it in place because I'm pretty sure once you get these on that they don't come off very easily. And once you've got that first eye in place, then what we want to do, we want to stay on the same row or in between those same two rounds we're going to count over four stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then I want to place my other eye into that next stitch over. So I'm going to make sure you get it straight and you're sure that it's in place. Now doesn't look like much now actually it looks a little bit creepy until you get the snout and get it stuffed so there we go once we get those in and now we've got our eyes in place and we're ready to move forward In this section of the video, we're going to work on crocheting the snouts for our bear. This is going to be the only part that we do not start off by crocheting in the round and using the magic ring. For this piece, we're going to start off with a slip knot. And we want to make five chains. Now we want to make a single crochet from in the second chain from the hook. So we're going to skip this first chain right here and we're going to single crochet into the second chain. We're also going to single crochet into the next two chains, so this one and this one. Now basically what we're doing here is making an oval shape. We're going to increase for a little bit and then we're going to stop increasing and it's going to make it so that we can stuff it. So what we're going to do is for this last chain, we're going to make five single crochets into the same stitch and that's going to get us from this side that we're working on over to the other side. Once you've made your five single crochets into that last chain, we can go ahead and single crochet into the next two stitches. But from this view, it looks a little different than what you're used to. If you can see this little strand right here, this is basically the other 
piece of that chain that we created, the foundation chain at the very beginning. And so that's the next stitch. That's where we want to work into. And we're going to do that for the next stitch as well. So you can kind of see this little opening right here. That's the next stitch that you want to work into. And then now we have one more stitch left. And in this stitch, we want to make three single crochets. With round one completed, we can go ahead and start working on round two. And what we're going to do is place two single crochets into this first stitch, but we're going to start using the stitch marker again after we place the first single crochet. That way we can keep track of our rounds. So then you can go ahead and make your second single crochet into that stitch. And we're going to single crochet once into the next three stitches. So when we're crocheting an oval, we don't need to increase on the sides. What we want to do to keep it flat is increase around these edges. And that's exactly what we're going to do next. We're going to put two single crochet into this next stitch right here. And we're going to put one single crochet into the next then two single crochets into this next stitch and now we're going to single crochet ourselves across the side so we'll make one single crochet into the next four stitches Now make two single crochets into the next stitch. And one single crochet into the last stitch of this round. Round three is very similar to the last round, round two. We're going to make two single crochets into the first stitch And we're going to single crochet into the next five stitches just one time. Now we'll single crochet two times into the next stitch. One single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Two single crochets into the next. Two 
Now we'll single crochet once into the next five stitches. Now we're going to single crochet two times into the next stitch. And one single crochet into the last stitch. Round four is the last round that we're going to increase for the snout. We're going to begin by single crocheting once into the first stitch two single crochets into the next stitch Now we'll single crochet once into the next six stitches. Now two single crochets into the next. And single crochet once into the next two. Now we'll make two single crochets into the next stitch. And we'll make one single crochet into the next seven stitches. We'll make two single crochets into the next. And one single crochet into the last stitch. Now for round five, we're not going to increase anymore. We're just gonna make one single crochet into every stitch. And I'm still going to use my stitch marker because we have one round after this one.
And now for round six, again, we're just going to make one single crochet into all of the stitches except the last two. This is going to be the last round, and since we're working in a spiral, we want to basically bring the height of our stitches down a little bit to make it more uniform on that section where we end up. So we'll talk about that in a little more detail once we make it around to the end. Okay, and once you have two stitches remaining, go ahead and slip stitch into the first and slip stitch into the last. And see how that kind of brought our stitches down in height a little bit so it kind of matches the curve of the piece. So at this point we can now bind off and you wanna leave yourself a pretty long tail for this one. We have to make sure that we can sew it the full length Now that we have our snouts crocheted, we, we should go ahead and start either appliquing or add on the nose because we're not going to be able to do this once we sew it to the bear. So what I did for the, the pictures, my, my demo bear, I used some, this is Limebrand Heartland and Black Canyon. You can use any black yarn that you have in your stash. You'll probably only need a few yards. And go ahead and thread your darning needle. And I like to work this doubled up. So I'm just going to pull, like I said, about a yard or so, just so that I've got two strands. And this is just going to make it go a little bit faster and to make our nose a little thicker. Now, what I have done is you got to come in from the back side or from the inside of the snout and you want to find, so you can kind of see where my darning needle is coming out, is roughly the center of the snout. And I'm just going to pull that through all the way until I've reached the end of where I've got my two strands. You can leave it a little bit, you want, you want to leave a little bit of room so that you can tie it off. And now we're going to just jump up to the next side. So what I did was I went up one, two, and three rows and inserted it into the, the stitches in between the third and the fourth rounds. And you want to kind of flare out a little bit so I've got it coming at an angle there. And you'll just put the darning needle back in through and feed that through. Now as you're doing this, you don't want to pull too tight on this. You actually want it to kind of have a fluffy appearance. And now what I want to do is I just want to count over a few stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Let's see, we'll go over four. So I'm going to come back through that stitch from the other side from the inside. And now we can go back down into the same stitch 
that we started off there at the very beginning. Okay, and now since we are, our yarn is coming from the inside, we're gonna work the inside out. And I'm gonna start over on this side here and just come up through that next stitch. And then again, back down into the center And then I'm going to come up right next to that. Okay, and then right back down into the center again. We're basically just going to do this same thing across the nose until we've reached the other side and we filled everything in. Well, sometimes it gets a little bit tricky towards the end. You've got so many strands back there, they have a tendency to get tangled. But as I said, just be careful on how tight you pull it. You don't want to open up these stitches or make the nose look a little funny. Okay, and I'm going to go up one more time. Okay, so once you've got the nose completed, then we can go ahead and do like the little mouth. So I've got like one little strand that comes down here for the mouth. So I'm going to take my needle from the inside again. I'm going to try to find the point. There we go. Right below the nose, although that's a little crooked. You want to try to make this as centered as possible. And pull that through and just drop down a couple of rows. So we'll skip this one and this one and we'll go down in between. And so like I said, you want to make sure you've got a straight line there. And pull that down. And there we go. We've got our nose and our mouth for our bear. And so all that's left to do is just tie this off here in the back and we're ready to work on the next body part of our teddy bear. In this section of the video, we're going to be crocheting our ears. So to crochet the ears, we're going to start off by creating a magic ring. And we're going to chain one because we're working in single crochets. Now this is just a review. We're doing the magic ring and we're starting off the same as we have the other portions of this pair. And we're gonna single crochet six times into the magic ring. Okay. 
Once you've made your six single crochet, you can go ahead and close up your ring. And now we're going to make our first single crochet eggs. We're working in spiral. So we're going to make our first single crochet into the first single crochet of our magic ring. And once you've completed that stitch, you'll just go ahead and place your stitch marker. And now we're going to proceed with round two by making another single crochet into that same stitch because we want to have two single crochets into every stitch around our ring. So we should have a total of 12 stitches again at the end of this round. Okay, once you've reached your stitch marker, we've completed round two. We can go on by starting round three. So we're just going to remove that stitch marker and place our first single crochet into that stitch. And now we're going to make one single crochet into every single stitch, again with a total of 12 stitches for this round. Round three is going to be another round of increasing. So we just need to make one single crochet into the first stitch there with the stitch marker. And then two stitches into the next stitch. And one single crochet into the next, and two, and that's our repeat for this round. And moving right along to rounds four through six, they're going to be exactly the same. We're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch, so we're not going to be increasing anymore. Once you've completed round six, our ear is complete and we can go ahead and bind off 